a lot with us today. We'll now go on to the keynote address by Dr. Ticolo, but before she comes up, I'd like to read her profile. Dr. Ad Ticolo is a seasoned educationist with over 30 years of experience in education delivery, research, administration, and management. Dr. Ticolo is a certified dyslexia assessment, support, and intervention person. She holds a certificate of competence in educational testing, a diploma in dyslexia support, and a certificate in assessment and access arrangements from Middlesex University, UK. She's a board certified cognitive specialist and a member of the British Dyslexia Guild and British Psychological Society. As a consultant and advisor on education and learning, Dr. Ticolo has worked with schools on school improvement and learner achievement, with the government on enhancing inclusion, and with international bodies on reviewing the rights of the education and inclusion in education policies and practices in Africa. She's passionate about helping children achieve their full potential. Please, let's make welcome Dr. Tikula. She takes the welcome, the keynote address. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. The event organizers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today at this landmark event, discussing two of the most increasingly significant topics in learning and sustainable development, and two of my favorite topics, dyslexia and ADHD. So thank you for inviting me. Let me begin with a quote from George Evans. Every student can learn, just not on the same day or in the same way. So someone that spoke before me had asked how many people have heard about dyslexia prior to this day. And I'm going to ask exactly the same question. So with a show of hands, how many people before today have heard about dyslexia and ADHD? All right. In the last one year, how many people had heard in the last one year? All right. In the last five years. Great. So at least we can see that the numbers are very few. Thank you for that. As you have all demonstrated, before now, talk about dyslexia and ADHD was rare, especially in Nigeria. There was barely any awareness of two of the most common learning differences in the world. In the world. And please note that I said learning differences. Two of the most common because dyslexia occurs in about 20% of any population. That's about one in five persons. That's a huge number. Aside from that, it's the most common learning difference, making up about 80 to 90% of all learning differences. Very common and very, very common and very much with us. Practitioners themselves, in the thick of teaching and learning, are vaguely aware of dyslexia and ADHD. Dyslexia is often wrongly labeled as laziness, stupidity, or a lack of intelligence. ADHD was something chasing the child. The ability to recognize attention deficit as separate from something intertwined with hyperactivity was missing. But here we are today, a room full of interesting and interested educators, parents, policymakers, and concerned Nigerians sitting here to discuss the truth, realities, and the way forward with not just for dyslexia and ADHD. Oh, I'm excited. I'm really excited because when I got into this space, there was no talk about dyslexia. What do I want to do today? Well, today, I want to provide a backdrop for the incredible knowledge sessions that you're about to experience. 
I want to provide a context that would allow you to see the conversations we are going to have on a macro level. To see the themes that link them, how they connect, and what that means for the future. I'm going to explore some narratives that have shaped dyslexia and ADHD over time and show you how they are being disrupted today. And then invite you to embrace a newly informed perspective as we look forward. I'll give you some background as to my career in this space. I know they've told you about my profile. Thank you so much for that. I've been in education for about 40 years. I hold a PhD in education, and I've successfully run an education institution for about 25 years. So I'm an education leader. I'm a teacher. I'm a consultant. I'm a trainer. I'm also a coach. And my life work is really a continuous expression of my dedication to ensure that every child attains their full potential. Over several years, I've come across many children that experience certain learning difficulties, especially with acquiring literacy, that did not respond to conventional teaching and remediation. They were bright, engaging minds in multiple aspects of school life, in art, creativity, emotional intelligence, science, music, sports. They were able to connect dots between topics and generate exceptional ideas. But there was a significant challenge with reading, writing, and spelling. Sometimes with memory, attention, or with the rate at which they processed information and understood what they read. My work to support these children led me to dyslexia. It led me from the broad world of education into identifying, assessing, remediating, and advocating for specific learning difficulties. It also led me to establish Dyslexia Nigeria, an organization that works to ensure that every child and adult with dyslexia can thrive. This mission, which has been my mission, basically throughout my life, has always highlighted the first narrative that I want to discuss. This narrative, I often hear, and I'm sure you do too, that young people lack the skills to take on meaningful work roles in our changing world. The same narrative existed when I was a little girl. I would hear, hear elders say, Aumoyi, Aumoyi, Children don't want to work. That was even many of us in those days we were speaking about. Funny enough, that narrative has persisted till today. Now we say, oh, Gen Zs, they don't want to work. This new generation, they don't want to do anything. If you listen closely, though, the real comment in here is that young people don't seem to have the skills that the world needs. In my view, I would argue that young people do have the skills needed for a rapidly changing world. The question is, how are we nurturing those skills so that they can thrive? How are we preparing people for the future, for life? When I think about this idea of preparing people for the future, naturally, I think about children. How are we enabling them to better utilize the skills they are born with? How are we equipping them with the tools that they need to succeed? How are we positioning them to thrive in a disruptive future? And when I think about that, I think about one place that society, that we all have set aside, for this work of preparation, the school. The skills we need to survive, the skills for the future, they're not the same stereotypical skills of standardized professions of the past. They cannot be, because we cannot train children for jobs that we don't even know. Look 
back last 15, 20, 30 years, jobs like data scientists, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, social media managers, they didn't exist. Yet today, there are the jobs out there that are delivering on fulfillment, joy, and economic empowerment. And market, technology and artificial intelligence will take center stage in the future. So this future is already knocking. Those that are thriving are those with the skills to learn, to grow, and to adapt. The skills that are needed are the skills like imagination, creativity, adaptability, resilience, emotional intelligence, innovation, empathy, problem solving, and curiosity. These are the skills of the future. Now, one in five of us already is born with those skills, is born with those skills. These people are dyslexic. By the way, dyslexia and ADHD co-occur up to 40% of the time. The rest of us must acquire the skills. But guess what? We will all need to develop them. Now, my question is this. How many of you think that school develops these skills? The sad reality is that school often does not develop the skills. Allow me to explain. When children are born with these skills, which I call gifts, showcasing as dyslexia or ADHD, or with other skills of the future, like ability to be resilient, to innovate, and be energetic, to be creative and hyper-focused on solving meaningful problems, the gifts of ADHD, what it means is that they are already born with the skills that we all need to survive and thrive in the age of infinity. It's like being given a golden seed that could grow into a golden plant. What would you do if you had that seed? You would probably really want it to grow into that golden tree so that you could be very careful with it. You would nurture it and learn new ways to look after it so that it would thrive. You wouldn't say it was worthless just because it looked different from other plants that you were familiar with or because you had to learn how much water or nurturing that was needed, right? I mean, how can gold be worthless? Well, in the first few years of life, especially of school, Guess what happens to that golden seed? We say to the child with the ADHD, he doesn't sit still. He's too playful and unserious. He doesn't focus. And we say to the child with dyslexia, he's lazy. He can't read a simple line that his sister or brother can read. He does not remember and follow instruction. And he would just pay attention. And if he could just pay attention, he would learn. So no more sports for you. No more music. No more creativity. You're too playful. What we're really saying is, you're not like the other plants that I'm used to, that I find easy to teach, that I find easy to teach how to read and write and spell, or that learns the way that I teach. So there has to be something wrong with you, not with me. I don't need to find how to teach you. You are the one that is difficult. You are the one that has a problem. And this is usually our view. Essentially, what, what school does in those few years is take that promising seed and crush it. Then we say, oh, we don't have the skills to survive in the new age. We do. We're just not nurturing them enough. We're focusing only on skills that come easy to majority of people or to majority of plants and throw away the rest. 
We're focusing on preparing children to pass exams and to be versions of intelligence that we are familiar with, that's logic and linguistics, rather than seeing how we can nurture all of the nine types of intelligence, which show up as the different strengths that we all possess. In other words, we ignore and put down our neurodiversity. What is neurodiversity? It is the concept that we're all different in the way that our brains process information. The same way we're all different physically. We look different. It's obvious. But we can't see what's going on with our brains. But the same way we're different on the inside, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong. So, we ignore and put down our neurodiversity. But again, I'm glad that we're here because it shows there is beginning to be a shift in that narrative. We are beginning to see that our neurodiversity is a gift and that we must now find ways to nurture those gifts. And that brings me to the second narrative, which is that when we identify neurodiverse thinking, in this case, dyslexia and ADHD, we believe that all we need to do is remediate. We need to fix things. We need to fix them. That thinking often comes from a positive intention, yes. Perhaps one of inclusion. But once again, it is coming from not seeing the golden seed for its worth especially for the worth of his gold, but from seeing only the way that that golden seed is different from other seeds in ways that we feel bad. We are saying, okay, your golden seed, and you need to be watered five times a day so you can grow as tall as the other plants. It doesn't sound like a bad thing, but it doesn't value the gold. What we need to say is, your gold is such a gift. What do I need to do to help you thrive so that your gold can flourish? We need to move from a remediation and deficit perspective to a strength-based one. And this is the narrative. The deficit perspective, that perspective of lack, where you are less than others, often leads to stigmatization of individuals with learning differences, labeling them as disabled or dysfunctional, thus eroding their self-esteem and their self-confidence. What is worse is that this negativity often creates a self-fulfilling prophecy, hindering their progress in academics and personal development. By concentrating on their deficits, the strengths and unique talents of these individuals with learning differences often go unrecognized. My charge to you today is to change this deficit narrative of dyslexia and ADHD and embrace the strength-based approach to learning differences, which is more holistic and empowering and acknowledges their strengths and abilities. Recognizing that we're all different and our differences can manifest differently, a strength-based approach invites us to provide personalized support and to consider an individual's specific learnings, needs, and, ta and talents. This tailored approach is more likely to yield positive outcomes academically, psychologically, and mentally. By embracing diversity and recognizing the contributions of individuals with dyslexia and ADHD, we can tap into a broader pool of talent and we can create opportunities for individuals to pursue careers and passions that align with their strengths. We will then realize that in truth, we do have the skills that the world needs for today and tomorrow. In fact, this year, 
a new study showing people with dyslexia have enhanced abilities was one of the main topics that was discussed in September at the World Economic Forum. The world is waking up. At Dyslexia Nigeria, we too are embracing a strength-based view of dyslexia and have built on that to craft a revised definition of dyslexia, which I will leave you with. Dyslexia is a genetic difference in an individual's ability to process information. As a result, dyslexic individuals have differing abilities with strengths in creativity, problem solving, and communication skills. But they also have challenges in areas related to language processing, like reading, writing, and spelling. So you focus more on the strengths. Therefore, with this new awareness must come understanding. When we understand dyslexia and ADHD and learning differences, we break down the barriers of ignorance and discrimination. We move from labeling to listening, from exclusion to inclusion. We realize that dyslexia and ADHD do not define a person but rather add unique dimensions to their character. This understanding paves the way for schools to create supportive environments where every student, regardless of their learning profile, can thrive. Neurodiversity is not just a buzzword. It's a game changer. Individuals with dyslexia and ADHD often possess creative problem-solving skills outside the box thinking, and the ability to see patterns where others might not. They are the innovators, the entrepreneurs, the inventors, and the visionaries for the future. The more we embrace neurodiversity, the more we invite a range of perspectives that can drive innovation and fuel our ever-evolving world. Neurodiverse individuals are silent leaders. Their resilience, adaptability, and unique thinking make them trailblazers. The reminders that success comes in diverse forms. By nurturing this potential, we not only support the future of work, but create leaders who inspire others to overcome challenges and succeed. When we understand what dyslexia and ADHD, when we understand that they don't limit a person, but instead offer opportunities for growth and development, we empower individuals to become their very best selves. The awareness of dyslexia and ADHD must force us to reevaluate how we educate. It must compel us to embrace a more inclusive education system where each child, each student, is given the tool and support that they need to succeed. This will not just be an evolution, it will be a revolution in education. In conclusion, the future of school and work is being reshaped by the power of awareness. We're embarking on a journey that will redefine our understanding of human potential. Dyslexia and ADHD are not limitations, they are opportunities. We are at a critical juncture where our actions can create a world where neurodiversity is not just acknowledged but celebrated. So as we gather here today to discuss this very important topic, we must ask ourselves, what is the future we want for individuals with learning differently? The answer is clear. We want a future where every child with a learning difference receives the support they need to thrive in the classroom. We want a future where adults are celebrated for their contributions to society, for their unique talents and their indomitable spirit. We want a future 
where the understanding and acceptance of neurodiversity continues to grow so that no one ever has to face a silent struggle. So let us embrace this awareness and the future it promises. Let us open doors that were previously shut and see possibilities where we once saw challenges. Together, we can unlock potential of every individual with or without dyslexia and ADHD to achieve their dreams, to lead, to innovate, and to change the world for the better. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Together, we can continue to change lives, change perspectives, perspectives and change the world for the better. Thank you very much.